Hey folks, Jonathan here. Got some of the parts in for the 55. I uh, actually went through Rock Auto online. It's about the cheapest. There's two wheel cylinders. There's two front brake hoses. Uh, one of these is the, this is the clutch master cylinder. I've got the brake master cylinder. And I've got the uh, clutch slave cylinder. And the rest of the stuff's on the way. All new brake shoes. The other two wheel cylinders in the rear rubber line. So we'll do we we'll do all the brake lines, all the brakes, and uh, we've got to make our bracket for our, uh, slave cylinder. So what I'll probably do is uh, get this clip back off and finish up what I'm going to do on the firewall, which I'm not sure yet if I'm going to thought about checkering it, but you know I, I don't know that I'm going to do that. I'll I'll figure it out as I go, but uh, we are going to get it out. Go ahead and get our our slave cylinder on for our clutch, get that finished up. Uh, any of the holes in the firewall that need fixed, we'll go ahead and take care of. Uh, and do something on our heater system there where they chopped the holes in there. I'm not quite sure, you know, if they just pulled that core out of another vehicle or what, but we'll figure out what we're going to do on it. And uh, we're just going to start wrapping up all the little stuff here. And. Uh, that way we can get the brake lights running or the brake lines and everything ran on it and uh, shouldn't take too long or be too bad here I'm going to raise the radiator about an inch and a half and then uh, we still got to get you know the neck moved over and stuff so we can get that done and uh, that way when we put it together this next time and uh, we're good to put the front clip back on everything will be permanent and uh, don't have the rear yoke yet for the drive shaft so I, I've got the drive shaft in or laying in and uh, as you can see it's just down there on the ground it's longer than it needs to be uh, not a problem I've just got to find something that has the right yoke for that and U joint for that I don't like using offset U joints so uh, don't ask me why I just you know I, I've never bothered with trying to get them it's just easier to to you know pick up a regular U joint if one goes out you know and you need an offset where you know one cross is different than the other then uh, hard to find but uh i've got uh i looked at some of the stuff i've got and i've got one drive shaft but it's way smaller than this one i didn't want to go that small so i'm going to see what i can come up with here and so we can go ahead and get that finished up and uh besides that you know we're we're moving right along we shouldn't take us too long at all to to finish this thing up and uh we've actually picked up some more parts for the rat rod build so we're going to get get some stuff done on it before too long too but uh but i'm going to go ahead and get back on this and uh see what we can get now all right I'll show you more okay folks we've got our drive shaft that uh fits our yoke and uh let me see i think it's going to be just fine uh the difference is as you can see the, the size this one of course is bigger than this one and what we're going to do instead of using this shaft we will use this one and we'll actually take this one off from here use this yoke on it but uh, we may have to build a bushing to go between the two okay folks uh, one thing we are trying to do of course is to do this on a budget we're trying to save as much money as we can uh, or really we're just trying to not spend any not necessarily save but uh, picked up these rims now these are six lug Chevrolet, but they're kind of oddball because there's you know pretty deep dish and they're actually eight inch wide. And uh, where most of these rims you run along are you know six or seven inch wide and uh, not nearly as deep dish. Now this is the old style and these could be aftermarket from years back, uh, not sure. But this is what we're gonna use on the back. And I wanna use just some stock rims on the front that the cap goes on the inside. If you see there's no place for the cap to go on the outside and that's sort of what I was looking for I want the old the old style and uh, one of the things that you know straight rotters or hot rotters or traditional hot rotters done back then uh, which I guess they wasn't traditional then they was actually original but uh, paint their wheels of course and you know the brighter you painted the wheels the the better it looked and, and you know that was a an easy way to get around uh, 
you know, spending a lot of money on wheels or anything like that. Pop the hubcaps off, paint the wheels, and you know you was done. And uh, so basically that's what we're doing. And uh, not sure how it's going to look, but what we're going to do is go with uh, we're going to go with the orange on the wheels, a bright orange. And this is actually an old piece of a gallon I've got. There's about over half a gallon left in it, so we're going to use it. Uh, you see the label's about gone, but uh, this is uh, Agco orange, which would have been like an Alice Chalmers orange, which originally they called a Persian orange. And uh, this has just got a let me see corporate orange, machinery enamel, and. Uh, we're just going to spray them, and uh, of course we got to get them cleaned up first. I, I'm, I need to sandblast, but I don't have any sand. Uh, I may either pick some up or, or try to uh, maybe hit them with the wire brush real good and get them all cleaned. And there's a few little pits in them and stuff, but not a big deal. And uh, they had some old tires on them. We got the tires off, put new valve stems and stuff in them when we get done and uh, get them on. And hopefully we can round up a couple of the regular stock fronts. I've got two, but they're One's a 16, one's 16.5, so they're not going to work. But, uh, you know, I want to go a little wider on the back, a little narrow on the front. And, uh, you know, we're not spending a lot of money buying rims or anything. So, uh, and we'll find some old tires to put on there and uh, hop one of these junk cars and see if we can get them cleaned up and get them painted. Okay, folks, I've got the, uh, the drive shaft cut. I actually got it cut to the length I want. I did remember to get the tape on that one there so the joints didn't fall off but uh for the caps but uh got this one cut as you can see right on the edge of the well leaves us plenty of room that's almost that's probably three eighths maybe a little over three eighths of actual flat and then there's a taper here of course but that's plenty to get us lined up came up with this is actually a piece of steel and this was probably a weld on nipple at one time but it is steel it's not cast and uh the uh, OD of this, of course, is, is oversized. It's, it's actually about the, the same as the OD of the drive shaft. And then uh, our ID, we can cut easily and get rid of these, you know, these threads, or we can use the back side and where the threads are not at. And this is just an old rusty piece. And uh, But that is what we're going to use. We're going to go ahead and uh, that way I can actually, when I'm, when I'm chucked, I'll be chucked back here. And I can leave enough stuck out that I can turn here and not be crushing it. And it'll still be, you know, thick back there. So uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get this chucked up and uh, get it in good and straight. And uh, and we may use this side. We'll probably chuck it from this side and then go ahead and uh, face this off and get it straight where it's been cut. And uh, we'll turn out the, uh, the outside first. And then we'll bore the inside. And uh, that'll make us a good piece. Now this is not something you want to... Uh, you know, wrap duct tape around or something to try to get lined up. I mean, uh, you can do that and you can still get a dial indicated in, but you'll still be throwing your weight off. So that's definitely not something that you want to do, you know, just to wrap something around it or something. I mean, you really want to do something that's, uh, that's going to put it where it needs to be. And, uh, and I know, like I said, if you, do, if you don't have a lathe, you know, this may be something that once you get to this point, you know, you can go to a machine shop and, and have them make a piece and it wouldn't, you know, cost so much to, to have it done and uh, and I could use a piece of solid but I had to, you know I happen to have that and that's already a good ways on the on the way there and, uh, and like I said it is steel and uh, and I will do a spark test on it to make sure but I'm absolutely positive that's steel and uh, we will uh, go ahead and get to work on this thing get the bushing made and uh, hopefully get her together here all right got it straight now the key to doing this uh, is not to recheck it leave it in there and uh, just uh, do the outside do the inside don't remove it from the chuck until you're completely done with it or uh, leave it in the chuck and then use the cutoff uh, to part it off but uh, but that's the main thing but you see what we're doing here we'll go ahead and get it get it all finished up Okay, we've got the outside turned down, and now we're going to go to the inside. Uh, and it, you know, anybody that wonders, that's not something you'll get from cast iron right there. You know, you'll definitely uh, 
I only get chips from cast iron. When you start getting uh, strings, of course, it's stale. But uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get set up and do the inside, the ID, and then we'll part it off and we'll have it ready. Okay, folks, here's our uh, finished ring here. And uh, got the dry shaft cleaned up, yep, cleaned up, ready to put together. And uh, we can go ahead and knock this all together. You know, it's not real tight, but it's going to be tight enough. It'll stay, no problem. We're going to get this together, and then we'll put it in the truck. But we've still got to uh, get the brakes unlocked on the back and so we can turn the wheels to dial indicated in. And uh, we'll see if we can get that done and get her together. Uh, it sure is a center joint's way bigger than that rear joint, so I don't think we got to worry about ever breaking that one. But uh, anyway, we'll see how she works out. Okay, folks, drive shafts in. Uh, seems to turn real good. Uh, have not dial indicated in yet. Uh, finally got the drums off of the, uh, the rear end. Had a real hard time getting them off. Uh, they was froze to it. And uh, I actually went in and cut the, the nails, you know, whatever you want to call them, the keepers, and then I uh, I brought it out to where I could get in with the torch, and I just cut the bottom of the shoe. I could not get the adjusters to turn, they were so tight, uh, froze up, and uh, there was enough lip on it to, it was holding them, so I just went in with the torch far enough just to, just to cut the edge of the shoe off because they're not... Uh, <coughs> You know, the, you don't, they don't have to be turned in for cores or anything, so uh, everything else seems to be okay. We'll just have to work with that uh, adjuster to get it freed up and everything. But uh, we've got the new wheel cylinders in for this. We don't have the shoes yet, uh, but we can go ahead and get the wheel cylinders on and get it all cleaned up. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn the drums on this thing. Uh, okay, maybe a little hard to see in here, but... Maybe you can see how bad these things are, all that uh, the rust and the pitting, and you can see where the brake shoe was froze to the drum. So uh, I can see that it's got a it's got a pretty good lip on the outside. It's worn a little bit, but we'll you know we'll get it cut off and get it cleaned up. I think they'll be just fine. They're pretty thick. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to see with no light in there, but we'll. Uh, We'll do it, and then we'll we'll go ahead and clean them up, and then we'll uh, measure them out, and make sure they're going to be within specs. But I'm pretty sure they're going to be fine. All right, I'll get to work on this, and I'll show you when I'm done. Okay, if you can see it, I want to show you where we was at on this. As you can see, it's uh, it's cleaning up real good, but still got a lot of pitting in there. So uh, we're gonna go on and take it down until we get the pitting out. I think we're gonna be fine on thickness because it didn't look. I don't think they've ever been turned before. So uh, we'll just keep at it until it's gone, and then we'll check it. All right. Okay, folks. Both of the drums are turned and uh, finished up. Uh, you can see a really sort of a dark spot through here and uh, you really can't feel it but I didn't want to go any farther than I had to so uh, we went on and finished it off with that looks good they're well within specs uh, evidently they hadn't been turned before and if they had I probably wouldn't have been been able to get them right but uh, they're good to go so we're finished with that uh, we're going to call tonight in the morning I'm going to get started on and hopefully if I don't get any toes that run me out of here, but uh, we'll get started on the back wheel cylinders and straighten uh, do a few other little things, but I uh, can't do the shoes on it yet, but uh, we can, there's plenty of other stuff to do, so show you more. Okay, folks, another scorching hot day. It's the next day here, and uh, I figured because uh, I don't have the brake parts, everything I need anyway, I don't have the shoes for the rear. 
I do have the wheel cylinders, but I don't have the wheel cylinders for the front, but I'm going to get these drums off and get them turned. And uh, it sure is nice having a jack that uh, is low enough to slide up under an I-beam axle. And as you can see, it goes as high as it goes. It makes it really nice, that's for sure. But uh, I'm going to get these wheels off and go ahead and get them uh, drums on the, rotor la or on the drum lathe and get them, get them turned. And hopefully they're in good shape. We'll see. All right, we got uh, got this one off. They wasn't uh, backed up tight or anything. I think the reason the back was stuck, of course, is because there was no bed on it, and it rained on it, and water got inside the the you know the drums and rusted everything up. So this don't look too bad. And uh, there we go. It don't look too bad. So we'll go ahead and. Uh, get the rotor or the drum turned it's in pretty good shape not bad at all I think it'll you know, turn out just fine uh, there really wasn't much grease in it what was in it was just so runny and almost like a gear oil which is not a good thing and uh, so we will go ahead and uh, get all this straightened out and we'll get them in there and get them on the uh, on the rotor lay or drum lay alright see you Okay, we had a really busy day, but we've got all our drums done. Uh, two for the back, two for the front, and hopefully our parts should be in tomorrow, and we can uh, start getting some breaks together on this thing. So, appreciate everybody watching. Bye.